Good evening. Welcome to ITM 387E, Mobile Commerce and Mobile Apps Development. What we're going to do in this video is complete Assignment 5, which is building a GPS tracking app with Apri.io. My name is Davis Kurihara Nakasu, and I'm taking Dr. Halverson's app development class, which so far has been uh, really great. So basically, what this app does is it tracks your current location via your mobile device's GPS sensor and stores the, lo the location into a cloud database. What we have to do first is, so if you can go to the itm387e.info page and then go to assignments. and find instructions for build a GPS tracking app right here and click on them so these instructions actually we're going to be building from a backup an app backup so it's quite f quick actually it should only take a few minutes so now that you have the instructions open I've printed them out and you can do the same it's easier to follow along and take notes on so I'll use this to refer to, but my main screen is going to be this one right here. So I've logged into Apri.io with my username and password. And what we want to do first is download the app backup. So we go to the instructions again, and then we scroll down. And this is a picture of what it's going to look like. It says GPS location is determined every 15 seconds and we can change the interval and this location is shown in the app and also saved into the cloud database okay so over here it says download the app backup so when you click on that it's going to open this file and then you want to save it so make sure it's save file and then click OK I'm using Firefox, but it'll do the same in uh, Google Chrome. And so we have it in the downloads folder. And we're going to create a new app from it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And it says that we need to build a binary file and install it on the device for testing. This is only if we're going to be publishing to the Google Play Store or the Apple um, App Store. So we're not going to be doing that, so we can skip this step. So I'm going to go ahead and create, go back to Apri.io and then go to, let's see, create new app. And I'm going to give it the name GPS Tracking App. And instead of building from template, we want to, or from example, we want to build from backup. So we click on that. and then it says to choose a file so we click that and then what we want to do is we want to find that it for me it was in downloads we click on it GPS app backup zip and we click open and then we've chosen the file we click create now as you can see the UI or the user interface for this backup app because it's older it it's using an older version of Apri.io basically the functionality is the same and we're given the opportunity at the very end to upgrade our app to a different for um, newer format and so we can work in the older format now as you can see the version of Apri.io is a little bit different um, See, we have the menu here, we have the test button here, we have the export feature, and here it's, but it's familiar, I mean, based on doing the other projects. So we can click the plus button here. And the start screen, we can click that. So you can see the what the start screen looks like.
Okay. So the instructions state that now we just need to config configure the setting service with the correct database ID. It says this app uses a pretty simple database. It contains one collection with name locations. This collection contains one column location with type of geopoint. At first I was confused. I tried to actually find uh, this somewhere and I couldn't. The reason why is because we have to go to the database. So your options are you can save and then you can go back to the app list and go to the database or you can find the database button here. So we can click on that and it takes us to database. So what we have to do is right now we have to create a new database so we click create new database and let's call it location db because this is a it'll keep track of our location in the database we click create and then we want to create a new collection so we click that and let's call it locations that's the instructions want us to do that so we click add and it says it contains one column so we can scroll down and we're gonna go plus column we'll create a column and it wants it to be called location with a lowercase l location and the type instead of string it says we want geopoint so let's go to the bottom here's geopoint right here so we have location is the name of the new column and geopoint it's going to keep track of the geolocation points we create, create column okay and so what we have to do now this kind of confused me too I didn't know where to go from here um, to find the database ID. So uh, for, through jet, guess and check, I realize that it's not permissions, but it's settings. So if you go to settings here, you see here's the API key for this database, and the master key and the creation date. So this is what we want here, this API key, and I'll show you why. So we have that. It's not, there's nowhere to save, so we go back to our from the database to our actual app and we locate in services the G GPS location tracking settings right here so that opens up now the instructions say open the GPS location tracking settings file which is what we did, just did over here we expanded services and then GPS location tracking settings and then it says once uh, no it says and change the database ID to your own so as you can see here's the database ID and this is the default value now we want to delete that and we want to replace it with the one that we just created the location d database so I'm gonna just click here and I'm gonna delete it and it says add value so I'm gonna go back to here and remember it was this one right here I'm gonna highlight it and press control C and then go back to here and then paste it control V okay so that's the new that's the database ID that we just created for the database we got rid of the default and we replaced it with our database ID it says once the database ID is changed in the settings file the application is ready to go so basically that's that's all we have to do if you read further you can take a look at how the GPS service starts initially after the device ready event and it runs every 15 seconds there's code for that in the instructions 
and we can also change how often the GPS will run. To show you this, I'm going to save and then I'm going to test it. So I'll click save. And it saved. Now, this is an app that's separate. Again, um, I created a separate one, not linking it. Um, if you wanted to link it, you would probably have to just go through the same process to link to your start page. But if you wanted to test it, like how Dr. Harvison showed us in class today, you can click on the uh, project and then app settings and then change the home page. So it'll load from this um, start screen, rather, the start screen. But since I've saved it, now the test button's usually here, it's over here. We want to click and then we want to make public. And then we want to test it. So we click test. And it takes a little while to load. So as you can see, you can press start and stop tracking. And you can change the update interval so it it gets your location every five seconds or every one second or whatnot. Now I think it loads, but you have to to get it to work you have to press this button. Maybe twice. One more time. Okay, so it takes a little while, it takes 15 seconds, and then it says, would you like to share your location with Apri? And then you click share, and then it gives you your current location. And then you can also change how often, okay, share location. Okay, so I guess it's the same thing. Okay, we can apply a new interval by updating the interval by... Okay, let's update it to five seconds and then start it again. So every five seconds it's going to ask you. Then you click share and it gives you your current location. Okay, it's going a little faster. I'm going to stop it. Okay, so the app works, and it says, if you get an error message, you'll see the error in here, or I'll say, um, save failed, it won't work. Every time a new GPS location is retrieved, the location is saved into a cloud database. So if we go back to the database that we created, and we click on collections, we can see that all of our values all of the GPS locations are being stored here. Here's our database ID that we entered, and then here are all the locations, you know, in real time. Okay, there are additional functionalities that you can build into this. Um, the instructions just cover up to here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the bi the video because we're done. But before that, before I do that, we can take a look really quickly at your options um, to test it. Now it's saved already. I was working with the export feature and I was trying to get the Apri IO plugin to work to save it as a plugin and then try to add it to the existing page you know the one that we have all our apps on uh, for our, our assignments project like our 11 assignments on one app However, I couldn't really figure out how to do that. I may have to check with uh, Dr. Halverson on how to create this as a plugin and then just add it as a template into our e pre-existing app. It may or may not be possible. I'm not. I'm not quite sure how to do that. So, sort of a workaround that I found is instead of exporting it, all you do is you make sure this is saved and then you go back to the app list.
and then as you can see it says this app uses the older app builder version a new app builder version is available with new features and bug fixes that you should upgrade to so if you click upgrade it'll upgrade this app and so I'm gonna do that now and it has a disclaimer you can read that if you want then upgrade so now it's upgraded to the new format now we can a good practice is to back up your app so we click backup and then we save it it's going to save a backup so in case something happens to it we can you know recreate the app um, create new app from backup we don't want to delete we don't want to rename um, we've already tested it so if you scroll down the hosting now the custom domain is what Dr. Halverson set up for our main app so this app you only can have one custom domain for me it's m dot davis k u r dot i t m three a seven e dot info but since I already have that I can't create this GPS tracking app with the same custom domain but I can use this apri.io domain it's free and it's like a um, an additional domain so what you can do is since you can't add this app necessarily because we had to create it from a backup you can't add it to your all your assignments page what you can do is link it and to do that you have to first um, well, first you can create the button so actually that would probably be better we want it in the finished version so what you do is you go back to you open the GPS tracking app and you can add a button to the user interface it would probably be best to get this app in final form and then publish it because like we were talking about in class today if you make any changes if you publish your app to that free domain and then you make changes it's only gonna accept the changes that you made before you publish so it's better to maybe like let's say if you wanted to add a home button you drop it there and then delete the text and then maybe add the home icon and then name it if you want to change the name so like btn home assignment five or six is it six assignment five and then what you do is you click events and then you would take this component that you have clicked and then you would select instead of navigating to page because are, there are two different apps you would navigate to link and in the URL this is where I was having problems I was just entering the domain I created but you want to enter HTTP colon backslash backslash and then the thing so let's say I wanted mine to be called um, GPS tracking app dot Davis K U R dot I T M 387 e dot info so I write that down because what you have to do is When it's ready, 
you want to save it so now it's going to navigate to that link and then you save and then instead of testing it let's go to close oh no wait that is the actual app we don't want to link it back to our app so my mistake we open that again you want to link it back to so this is app is separate you want to link it to your main app so one moment sorry so you go to events and let's edit that so instead of shit, cancel wait cancel that we have to click on the button so they'll click on the button and then you want this to actually be http colon backslash backslash you want this to link to your actual your main app so for me it would be m dot davis k u r dot i t m three eighty seven e dot info and then save so that would link it to and then save to my main app and then close so now what we can do is publish this because it's ready to go to publish it we we don't publish in our custom domain which is the m dot username that itm three eight seven e dot info it's on the appri io domain and that was one where you would enter and you can enter http colon backslash backslash or you can just for this you can just enter gps tracking whatever you want to name it app dot davis your username dot appri and then publish it so make sure this is kind of a unique name and then click publish and then it's going to take a while what you want to, while is doing this I can explain to you what you can do you know sort of for your app so after this completes and it says it's successful you would open your main app the one with all your assignments and then go to the home page either the list item or whatever component the button that you want to click to connect to this app and you would set it so that you would set the event for the component for the button to navigate to link and then the link that you would use would be the URL for this one that we're creating for me it would be GPS tracking app dot Davis KUR dot ITM 387 E dot info but you would have to remember to also put HTTP so it'd be HTTP colon backslash backslash GPS tracking app dot Davis KUR dot ITM three eighty seven E dot info. And then you would save that and so now you would have event that when you click on the button it would navigate to this app and then you would have on this app when you click on it it would navigate back. So you would just have to republish after you made the changes to your main app the one with all your assignments the same way I did with this you republish it and then it should work fine and, and if you let's just wait for this to finish if you have any questions uh, we can work on it you know in class or I, I can may, maybe clarify it I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video and you know it should publish successfully and once it does you can either scan the QR code with the QR reader and then you can go to it or 
you can enter the uh, URL that you just created just to see if it it pulls up on the internet you know from a browser I do suggest using Chrome or Firefox um, I sort of been having problems on and off sporadically with Safari um, Internet Explorer also works probably pretty good so okay it says we are done your app was published successfully so all you have to do is do the same for the other and great you should be done with this tune in next time for another app build and you know, I hope I wish you uh, a lot of success thank you very much good night